This is Annie. She was born on the 19th of November 1962 in China and lived a relatively normal life until the 1st of March 2005. It was at this point that she was arrested for engaging in the peaceful practice of Falun Gong and sentenced to two years at a forced labour camp. During her imprisonment, Annie suffered both physically and mentally, and even after her release, the local police still threatened to re-arrest her if she didn't give up practicing Falun Gong and give up on her beliefs. I met up with her in Regent's Park, London, to listen to a story. Having established the nature of Falun Gong as what practitioners refer to as cultivation of virtue and spiritual development through the use of Qi Gong, the coordination of several breathing patterns, physical postures and motions, I set out to ask Annie what the difference was between Falun Gong and other Qi practices and religions. Very really very hard to say. Whatever Buddhist or Christian and uh, Catholic, you know, is all teach you to be a good person. And uh, Falun Dafa is not a religion, and uh, you can cultivate any time you go to work or study or you know, at a family, and uh, and uh, exercise transform your body to high energy matter. You know, since I practice Falun Gong, I haven't taken any medicine for over ten years. The personal benefits of practicing seemed obvious, but I still could not understand why the movement was illegalized in China, why its followers were being persecuted, and most of all, why a person like Annie was imprisoned. This group of people grows too quickly, very quick, and it was very effect, effect, and to, to heal your illness. Once the people start practice Falun Gong to do the exercise, the illness gone. Whatever they young or whoever they are old, old, you know. And for some people, of course, especially for for farmer, they don't have a, um, they call health care, health care. So they have to pay, you know, when they get sick. So of course this this exercise really give them help, you know. Once they started, all the units gone. So that's why this group of the people grows very quick. Government afraid. They think they are going to do with uh, political. They are going to we are going to take interest about the power. They just afraid. Is so many people. You know, before Chinese government banned Falun Gong, it's already 100 million Chinese people practice Falun Gong. And during only a few years, you know, the master just promoted the Falun Gong from 1992. Only a few years, seven years, the, so, the, the, this group of people grow so quick from what to 100 billion people, you know. So that's why government free. They want people stupid and follow them, of course, you know. And uh, th at that time, the leader, President Jiang Zemin, he's jealous. Persecution started, already started from 1999, the 25th of April. And uh, so the government banned Falun Gong from the date of 20th of, in July 1999. And from that day, any practitioner found. Yeah, uh, from that day, start people, Falun Gong practitioners, arrested and something like that, sentenced. Before the, I was arrested, police kept watching me for over three years. They investigated everything of of mine, and uh, they know everything about me. And you know why? Just because they want, they want me to be a spy outside China for them. My last query was about the forced labor camps where Falun Gong practitioners were sent, 
and how Annie had spent her time in one. They, the first thing, they don't give me food to eat, enough food to eat. Every meal, breakfast, lunch and supper, just a half Chinese steamed bread. You know the bread, the Chinese bread, normally the size like this, only the half bread. And it's very sour. <coughs> During my detention, the weather was about in June, you know, and it was very hot. It was 40 degrees, so they don't give me enough water to drink. Every day, just 500 millimeters, you know. And not allowed me to sleep. Have to only sleep two to three hours a day. And not just like that. And they have forced me to sit on the stool, which is a, a 30 centimeters square. And uh, you know the surface is very uneven, not flat. And uh, there's a rule sitting there. Sit only sit just one third. And have to be, the knee have to be closed, feet have to be closed, and the back have to be very straight. And put the double hand on, on, the, on the knee and open the eyes, not allowed to close the eyes sitting over 18 to 20 hours a day. They use drug addict to watch us and I have to ask the drug addict, I say, I want to drink water. If they say, oh yes, <coughs> then I can pick up the, the cup and drink water. And after drinking, I have to ask the permission to put the cup back. So that means every movement I need permission. So if I feel my, my face itching, I have to ask permission, you know, to do that. So every movement, even, you know, to go to the toilet, is not allowed. So every time why I have to wait at least a half an hour, most of the time, one hour, two hours. So that's led my, uh, bladder pain later afterwards you know so even I don't have feeling about whether I have you uri urinated or not you know something like that that is a horrible uh, experience and uh, that is uh, the the uh, torture you that's a body from body and another thing is mentally torture you know for the brainwash they forced me to sit on the stool, watch the CD and the video, something like that. Again and again and again. It's all about uh, uh, slider, Falun Gong, something like that. Though lucky enough not to be physically assaulted during her time in the labor camps, Annie was witness to a number of incidents involving friends and fellow Falun Gong practitioners. They, they use drug addict, boot beat up, beat them, you know, and they use the toll. How? Because when they beat them, they have to shout. So they use the toll, hold the mouth, you know, and uh, at the same time they put very loudly music, so others, other practitioners can't hear it. is already already 55 years old you know just because she refused renounce the belief and the two drug editor put her down on the floor each of them pressed their arm and pull out their eye flash so she's screaming you know we can hear it and another practitioner who is already six, over 60 years old and the drug editor kick her and beat her up and she's screaming we all in the sleep we all fall in sleep so she, her screaming woke us up the situation are really bad thankfully Falun Gong and its many friends in the United Kingdom managed to bring Annie to London safely, where she's now applying for residence. 
but very little is being done for tens of thousands still being held in forced labour camps in China for having a belief that contrasts with its government's views.